When I was a teenager in Mongolia, in high school, I was so shy. I was wearing glasses. I'm holding my books every day. Like, I study hard. I just, all I do is go to school. Some of you may do something that you love, but not get paid for it. Others may do something that pays the bills, but not love their work. Is it possible to do something you love and get paid for it? Are there youths in Mongolia who get up each morning excited to go to work? In this episode of Generation, we'll introduce you to a young woman who gets paid to do the things she loves. She's a lover of music, fashion, and the arts. My full name is Oren Tsukbal. People call me Oren Tsukbal because my full name is so hard to say. And I just finished my boxing workout today. That's usually how my day starts because I've been doing it for the last five years for on and off. And because I don't work at any office, I do a lot of meetings, vlogging, editing, any, any kind of office stuff in the coffee shop. So let's go to the coffee shop. Ona is one of the few female DJs in Mongolia. As a side gig, she is also a freelance fashion model. Her side gigs don't end there. She is also a social media influencer, making vlogs with tips and tricks for keeping up with the latest fashion trends, beauty, health, and travel. Oh, and did I mention that she has more than 70,000 followers on Instagram? How does she do all these things? What does a day in her life look like? Keep watching to find out. To introduce myself a little, my major is fashion design. I studied in the States, but my main occupation is DJing in a club. So let's go inside. Who needs an office when there's a coffee shop? Here, she'll be editing her videos for her YouTube channel. For one vlog, it takes around eight to nine hours to edit. To upload, it takes a whole night. The main reason I vlog is to inspire people, to share what I learned. I wanted to have YouTube channel for almost 10 years, uh, but I, now I have YouTube because of my boyfriend. So tell us, what were you like when you were little? When I was a teenager in Mongolia, in high school, I was so shy. I was wearing glasses. I'm holding my books every day. Like I study hard. I just, all I do is go to school. Like not hanging out with friends or having boyfriend or anything like that. I was so different from now. So right after I finished my high school, I went to the United States of America to get a better education because my mom really wanted, wanted me to go to the States. So I went to North Dakota Dickinson State University for a business administration because business is cool. Everybody wants to have a business and stuff. I had 60% scholarship. So that's the reason I went to the States. What was it like to go abroad for the first time? The biggest culture shock I remember was everybody was smiling at me. I was like, do they know me? Like, what the hell? Does she know me? Everybody's smiling. Whenever I look at them, they smile and they nod to me. It was a big culture shock. And another culture shock was every toilet has a toilet paper. <laughs> 
Another big culture shock was the internet speed was fast and every printer had full of inks. <laughs> And then I studied there for three, three semesters and then I got really bored and decided to move to the bigger city to study at a fashion. Me and my other friends, we were around five of us. Um, we chose Greyhound bus. It's the cheapest bus in the United States. So we went to Chicago to save money because fashion school is so expensive. Um, it was more expensive than just any other regular majors. So I worked as a waitress in a sushi restaurant. I saved a little money and I found an affordable fashion college in Hawaii. So I moved to Hawaii to study fashion, finally, after moving in two cities. Wow, Hawaii. That's everyone's dream vacation spot. What was it like for you? It was my first time learning fashion, like sewing and sketching, technical sketch, finding materials and fabrics. I lived in Hawaii for three years and I graduated my college. But then I worked, of course. I, I never had any free time. I worked as a waitress again. International students pay like a lot of money more than residents. One semester around I paid $6,000. That's only the tuition. Plus I gotta pay the rent and food shopping, everything else. And I found out learning fashion in Hawaii is not a thing again because uh, Hawaii people, they wear slippers, shorts, and tank tops all year round. You don't need to wear high heels. So I got bored again. <laughs> bored in Hawaii? Then you must be very adventurous. You worked non-stop while studying. Have you thought about getting financial support from your family? My father passed away because of cancer when I was really young. And uh, I have three younger siblings and my mom was raising like four kids. Uh, that's the reason I didn't want to take any money from my mom. So I was working hard just to finish my school. And then I found affordable university in LA. So I moved to LA with just by myself. LA was a dream come true. The weather, the people, and the fashion, and a big city. It was combined of everything. I was working in a restaurant as a waitress again. I'm a professional waitress. <laughs> I had to wake up at 5.30 every morning. I go to 7-Eleven to get a cheaper coffee. <laughs> After four years of hustling, I graduated my school with an honor. You moved to so many places to pursue fashion. How did this influence you in becoming a DJ? I think um, people who love fashion love music also because it's an art. Like, I don't see any, anybody who loves fashion but not loving music, right? So I had music passion as well. I was a DJ for my friends, but only in a car. Uh, I was playing MP3, I was playing CDs. During the time I lived in LA, I met a lot of cool friends. Even I met a lot of celebrities, and I had to organize few events like parties, and I met two of my friends. They were DJs, and I saw them DJing like from the stage. It looked so cool, and my little girl inside of me was running and shaking. I was like, oh my gosh, she, you should be majoring in music. And I was like, no. <laughs> then uh, 
I was talking to my friend every day, like, okay, please teach me, please teach me, I want to learn. And he told me, okay, you got to know your genre of music that you're going to play. So I Googled music genres. It was, it was way too much. Even house music has like 10 different genres inside. So I was learning the genres I wanted to play. And I was YouTubing tutorial for DJ like every day. Okay. So I finished my editing for now, for today. So I'm heading out to my photo shoot. Although Una's journey to the US began with a pursuit of a business degree, her consistency to search for her passion led to her many destinations in the US. After nine years of cheap coffees, 5 a.m. rises, various restaurant jobs, and endless hours of studying abroad, Una returned to Mongolia with a burning passion for the arts. Besides DJing, she's been working as a fashion model since coming to Mongolia three years ago. Today's photo shoot location is in this building, but then look at, can you see that picture? That's my previous photo shoot picture. I'm wearing Mongolian traditional headdress. So let's go inside. Now, because it's the season, I model about three to five times a week. Uh, it, it could be photo shoot or video shoot. I love it. Right now, it's a sports brand photo shoot. Whoops, why is she in her quote-unquote office again? Does she even DJ? Here's why. Before work, I prepare my DJ set. So I got to search and study all the new songs from all around the world. So my favorite DJs are Chris Lake. See that little hedge over there? Go around the corner of that. That's right. Keep going. Now. See that woman on the left? Dennis Cruz. And Peggy Goo. And more. People think I just play for one hour and leave, but then behind it, I gotta listen several hundred songs to pick the good ones. Last but not least, let's head to her main job, or shall I say hobby. Her job starts at 11 and she works three days a week. I'm here at work right now. Uh, I've been doing this for the past two years and this is my main occupation. So let's get going. The place she works at is one of the biggest clubs in Mongolia. Located at the heart of Ulaanbaatar, it's the number one clubbing destinations for clubbers. DJ for two years, so that means 2017. Um, when I was start DJing, my mom and like my close friends, they were never like fan of like working in a club, working in a night shift as a as a woman. But then I was this rebellious girl. I never stopped. In a music scene dominated by men, female talent is often overshadowed. But Una did not let this fact stop her from pursuing her interest. Today, she is one of the few female DJ artists in a male-dominated industry. How did you set your foot in the DJ world in Mongolia? The person who taught me how to DJ is has that guy. His name is Zola and he was a DJ for a group called Lumino and he DJed for more than 10 years.
For me, two years, is, I'm still learning. I, I need to learn a lot more. Can you show us how DJing works? My main tool for DJ is the flash drive. I have all my songs inside of this little tool. Without this, I'm nothing. Basically, this is my musical instrument. So it has two decks. It links, this deck links from this side. wonder what DJs listen under the headphone. This this deck music is playing right now. Uh, I gotta listen what what's next. So that means I'm listening to music, two songs at the same time. So we gotta make the beat match. What do you like most about working as a DJ? Best thing about DJing is it makes music makes everybody happy, stressless. Uh, it gives them good vibes and it can even help them lose weight too. Sometimes a hit song can be very powerful, but then other days it can be very boring. So it means I have to feel the audience, I have to feel the crowd. Uh, I have to know like, I have to know their age, I have to know what they want. I have to know like everything. So the way I feel my audience is just to see how they're dancing or the facial expressions. That's the, that's the main things I see through the audience. What have you learned from your experiences so far and what would you suggest others? There's a saying, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. At the end, everything I do for a living right now is my hobby. And I don't feel like I'm working. I always feel good about what I do, modeling, like vlogging, DJing. Goals in the future? Making music is every DJ's dream. So um, I already work, I already start working on that. I'll to, to have to own my song. And besides that, uh, as I said before, I collect figures. I want to own a little figure shop. And I just want to tell everybody, don't ever Forget about your hobby and don't work for money. Just do what you love. Yes, Ona is making a living from her hobbies. She plays music for a living. She also poses in front of a camera, wearing the latest trends, and records her experiences for thousands of viewers, all while being paid to do it. But she spends countless hours of work behind the scene having to prepare and listen to hundreds of songs to play for one hour DJ set. It's the same for her side gigs. She spends more than 24 hours preparing for only one vlog. Her days are as busy as anyone else's, but she enjoys every second of them. With hard work, dedication and effort, couldn't we live doing what we love too? I'm not